welcome back to the channel guys as y'all can see I got it out wow oh uh, this is not that bad um uh, cbt cbt y'all have you done any cbt you know how they face they have a weird face in the way they set up but it's the same thing as any other transmission guy <laughs> you got to get it unbolted from the block engine block and the flywheel and uh, look at these funky flywheel bolts there it is so there's nothing too dramatic about it. Uh, it's, it's a little pain. It pays eight hours, so that's not bad. Uh, like I always say, man, when you got your transmission out, that's a good time to inspect for other problems you may have, such as like real main oil seal leak. Doesn't matter the transmission. This is a CVT, but uh, any car, if you remove the transmission, that is your chance. As you can see right there, You know, that is a coolant bleeder valve housing. Okay, so. Uh, some starting to leak there. Does that look like oil? It could be oil or coolant. But. Uh, it's hard to tell. But uh, these are fairly easy too. Y'all know this car set up with uh, two thermostats. Okay, and uh, actually O rings in between the valve and the head. So. A lot of people go ahead and replace the whole bleeder valve, but you can't just take it off and do the seals because they leak. The seals flatten and it start leaking, but a lot of people tend to replace the whole bleeder valve assembly. Totally not necessary. Uh, thermostats are fairly easy to do. Take this housing off and it's one inside of there. And there's a big O-ring right here, so nothing major about any of that. Uh, where's the transmission? Oh, it's still right here. Got it on the jack. A couple sensors right here. Nothing major. Little CVT unit, man. CVT has gotten a bad rap, guys. Everybody's dogging a CVT out. Okay, there's no internal gears going on. Just a big old belt. And it's a funky technology, that's for sure. I mean, it was totally different. It caught us by storm. Uh... I went to school on one of these guys. We tore it apart. Big old huge belt on it. But we never, because I never got a chance to go inside one at the job, I didn't totally forget. I go. I would have to dig out the book. But it doesn't matter because you almost have to replace these. Okay, so at that point, it's the matter of who charged the cheapest to install a transmission. Okay, because it's only transmission only come in or go in and come out one way. Alright, so, <laughs> like I say, if you take this to Amoco, they're not going to give you an estimate on how to repair this or what it's going to take to repair. Almost, the most they'll give you or you can get outside of a whole unit is the valve body. I've done a couple of valve bodies on this. Alright, but other than that, if one come in the door, any kind of complaint with Tramish, unit time. Alright, so, uh. We can chat some more, guys. Let me take a quick break right quick. When I get back, we'll chat up some more. Stay with me. Don't go anywhere. All right, guys. One thing I want to point out, man. A lot of people used to get bit. Wow. That is bad. Uh, it's not really keeping up any noise. A lot of people get bit, especially the cars that's equipped with an uh, all-wheel drive unit, which means you will have to have some type of transfer unit. PTU, might, they may call it on the front-wheel drive. A lot of people used to misdiagnose those. Uh, when the action of the problem, no a grinding noise, problem will always be the hub band. So guys, if you're doing one chasing a noise, any kind of grinding type noise, it may not be your transfer unit or your PTU. It could very well easily be your hub band. I've seen this countless times. Misdiagnose, they put hub bearings on it. I mean, uh, put a transfer case on it and still have the noise. You talking about? It's already a pain to do a transfer casing. Not a caliber. I have yet to see an all-wheel drive caliber, but those other little Jeep models equipped with all-wheel drive. It is such a pain to take those out. So if you get, this is the perfect time to check if you get getting any kind of grinding noise out of this hub bearing. And these hub bearings are extremely, uh, without the special tools, I've done one. I actually filmed it. I just got to edit the footage. It is hard to get these bearings out of there complete. 
lot of guys just do the knuckles because they don't have the special tool to get the bearing out. <laughs> and God forbid that bearing also has the ABS sensor built into it. You have to face it the correct way in, for the, in order your, for your uh, ABS to function right. If not, as soon as you put it together, your ABS light going to be on. You know, I, I can't count the number of times that I've seen that here at the dealership. So it's not just a Joe Blow's automotive problem. It happens everywhere. Human, man. We're all human. Wow. They got them got them a aftermarket uh, cat converter. I sure hope this wasn't one of those models that's uh, get the free cat converter under the recall. A lot of people don't even know they have recalls that they have. And they go out and spend money. And I've seen it countless times. They go out and pay for a cat converter just to find out they had a recall for a free cat converter. You talking about painful, guys. That is painful. And this looks like it was a select fit, meaning it was all together. A lot of muffler shops, there cut it and just weld in a new cat. But this looked like it was select fit. To me, that's the best route to go because they haven't already done the measurements. They pretty much go mimic the factory measurement, make it look like it and everything so it should bolt right on. That's why they call it a direct fit. Okay, guys, so I'm waiting on, still waiting on the transmission to get here. So when it get here, we're going to get that thing installed. Uh, there's really no need to film the installation. The installation is fairly simple, man. Uh, it's just installing a front wheel drive transmission, guys. Alright, but I got some extra footage I can throw into this video to show y'all. Uh, so, real quick, guys, I'm going to wrap this part of the video up. Let me take another break. When I get back, uh, I just have some bonus footage for y'all to watch. Alright, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Stay with me. Don't go anywhere. I will be right back. Well, 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 welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. This Jeep Cherokee I was just talking about. So I'm gonna combine the two together because this is gonna be real quick. Now, this is uh turn out to be, according to my test drive, according to the way I test drive thing and analyze and try to isolate different things. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a transmission. Uh-oh, y'all hear that? See, I'm trying to move. I'm in park right now. Well, I'm in gear at a standstill. I'm in a lot, all right? <laughs> Put the car in the drive. Ooh. Yeah, even the phone's shaking. So, in gear, this thing is vibrating real bad. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, moral of the story or the bottom line, this is a transmission problem. All right? And when, lo and behold, what can y'all guess what kind of transmission? Oh, I hope I make it back to the shop. Oh, I was just doing all that. So that's what the customer was talking about when she was doing that. All right, let me come to the stop and finish this video. This, ladies and gentlemen, transmission equipped in this car happens to be a CBT. All right, I'm sure y'all done heard the history on the CBT. Sure, they got some problems. I mean, also, I don't know if you know this or not, but there's nothing we can do uh, as far as repair. There's no uh, repair. There's really not much you can do in a CBT transmission except uh, service it. Remove the pan and replace the filter and all that. Now, that's what I'm going to end up doing just so I can get a closer look at the fluid. Okay? Once I get this closer look at the fluid, I can uh, proceed with... Uh, what I'm looking for is chunks or, you know, excessive debris, things like that. If any of that is inside this pan, it's time for a unit because... There's no repair we can make. And what's weird is I went to school on this transmission uh, about five years ago. <laughs> it's a big old belt. It's it's constant velocity transmission. So it always uh, in gear. So listen, we threw the transmission apart and put it back together. Once we got out of the class, the memo came out. This was a long time ago. I think it was longer than five years. That uh, there's no repair is going to be done on the transmission. If it has any problem, replace it. So what's the point of spending, sending me to school for three to five days to learn the transmission? Okay, I'm making this too long. This car going to need a transmission. I'm about to go back into the shop and drop the pan and analyze the fluid and take a closer look at the fluid. And I can almost assume uh, because there's nothing we can do. Now, what's another weird thing is, like I say, it didn't set a check engine light, so there's no fault codes. That's when you got to do some diagnosing yourself. I was able to isolate... If you can put the, if you can, if you can be in gear and you're doing all this, uh, of course you're under a load because the transmission supplying the load. 
Throw the car into neutral. If everything go away, you're not gonna have any pull because you're not in gear. So, in order to isolate the transmission from the engine, how can I word this? Man, it's a feel thing. It's hard for me to explain. Um, I can't put it into words, but I've been doing this long enough to know how to isolate the two uh, using the gear shift, uh, using being in and out of gear. In other words, I isolate it. The problem happens on the transmission side when I'm in gear, okay? So that's as, that's as far as I'm gonna go with this car. Let me head on back to the shop. Oh, whoa, whoa! Y'all wish your boy luck. Hopefully I make it, y'all. I'm like a, a mile, two miles from the shop. Whoa! Okay, this is getting scary. All right, let me end this video, man, because I'm gonna get back on the road and I don't want a five to see me uh, of course, I mean, it's hands-free, so, you know, some people talk and film all day long, but that ain't my style. That ain't my stilo. So, thanks for watching. Come and subscribe. This is, we'll deal with it. We'll get through with it. Thanks for watching.